Good afternoon, um, everyone. Before I move to an operational update, I do want to acknowledge that this is the first time I have spoken with you since a provisional list of missing people was released to families late last night. Uh, this is not a formal list and will not be until formal identification has been completed. I have had contact though with those directly on the ground and know that providing as much information as we can is incredibly important. But I also know the receipt of that provisional last, list last night will of course have been devastating. And amongst all of the ongoing issues, the operation to bring to justice the person involved, to right through to securing the safety of our communities, and amongst all of that lies a list of people who were potentially the victims of this terrorist attack. They were loved ones and they were New Zealanders. Many of you will know that today I went to Kilburnie Mosque to lay flowers with Wellington Mayor Justin Lester and to meet with Islamic community leaders. Their message was one of gratitude for the outpouring of love that they have experienced from the people of Wellington and an acknowledgement of the grief that the community feels. As the Police Commissioner confirmed this morning, 50 people have been killed and 34 people remain in Christchurch Hospital, 12 of them in the intensive care unit in critical condition. A four-year-old girl remains in a critical condition at Starship Hospital in Auckland. I can confirm that the bodies of those who have died are beginning to be returned to their families from this evening. It is likely, however, to be a small number to begin with. It is the expectation that all bodies will be returned to families by Wednesday. To help ensure this happens as quickly as possible, we are receiving support from six disaster victim identification staff from Australia. The 28-year-old man charged with murder has been remanded in custody until April 5th, and police say he will face further charges. He is being held in a specialist security facility. Police have confirmed that there is no indication that two other people arrested on Friday were connected with the attacks. They have, however, confirmed that another person has been taken into custody as a result of evidence collected during the investigation, but there is no information to suggest that person is linked to the attacks. As the com police commissioner has said, this is tangential to the attack on Friday. Police say uh, public safety remains the top priority for the police both in Christchurch and across the country. The Police Commissioner will be issuing further advice as people look to return to work and school tomorrow. Needless to say, there will be an increased police presence in Christchurch tomorrow to ensure public safety. There are an additional 120 police staff in Christchurch. When it comes to mosques, during opening hours and while mosques are in active use, there will be a police presence outside. While they are closed, the public will remain in the vicinity. This will continue to be assessed while the police investigation continues. We know these events have been traumatic for the community, but particularly for young people. Today, local Ministry of Education staff met with senior staff at Hagley Community College and Birdside Primary School to provide support and resources. A team will be at Kashmir High School in the morning. The Ministry is also gathering information to assess intermediate trauma support needs at schools and early learning centres across the city. Support is already being provided to some schools and this will be expanded tomorrow morning. The Christchurch office is responding to calls as they come in and a team of 200 staff is being mobilised with specialist staff from other regions on site or on their way. For the rest of the country, all schools and early learning centres have now received communications advising them of available support. 
All regions have put traumatic incident trained staff on standby to provide support tomorrow. The Ministry is also working closely with the police and Red Cross to support the refugee community. I also want to acknowledge uh, in terms of wider advice, for instance, perhaps via parents who may wish uh, to seek advice on communicating with their children, the Ministry of Health is making advice publicly available. Um, my recollection is that is available on their website. I again also reinforce that the 1737 number remains open for texts or phone calls from absolutely anyone who may wish to seek further support, particularly mental health support at this time. That is open and available to anyone, and I understand they are experiencing an increase in contact. The National Management Crisis Centre was set up in Wellington yesterday with staff on the ground in Christchurch. This will ensure all agencies are working closely together to ensure the needs of victims and their families are being met. It will work alongside the national security system to ensure we have a comprehensive and well-coordinated response. In terms of immediate welfare needs, ACC is putting more staff on the ground in Christchurch, working alongside the Ministry of Social Development at the community uh, hub at Hagley. For ACC, as I've said before, immigration status is not a factor. It is based on the event happening here in New Zealand. In an event such as this, murder or manslaughter, the family is eligible for a funeral grant of around $10,000. There are also one-off payments for the deceased partner, children and dependents. Ongoing assistant provi assistance provisions for things like childcare and, of course, compensation for the loss of income. MSD is providing standard forms of financial assistance also, such as helping with intermediate and uh, uh, immediate needs and things like one-off grants for food payments. It will also be working with individuals and families to consider ongoing needs, such as uh, benefit support. Look, in terms of uh, the week ahead, particularly for uh, the government and also for parliament, cabinet will meet tomorrow. Uh, I will provide updates uh, from uh, this at my usual post-Cabinet press conference. As I've already indicated, it's my intention that we will have uh, an agency briefing for Cabinet and we will have preliminary policy discussions around uh, issues like, for instance, uh, gun policy. Members of Parliament will pay tribute in the House on Tuesday. Once the appropriate statements have been given, we will adjourn for the day. Communities are paying their respects and expressing their grief and support in a, a number of ways throughout New Zealand. Options and the appropriate timing for national commemorative services are being considered actively now. And I will announce more about that when we are in a position to confirm arrangements. I can confirm that we will open condolence books at Parliament tomorrow, as well as at the National Library. Further details will come on that um, for uh, uh, media to attend. Again, though, I want to finish my um, update today by again passing on my deepest gratitude and thanks on behalf of the whole country to the police, the first responders, the hospital staff who I met yesterday, right through to the teachers, many of whom kept their students in lockdown on Friday and who will be dealing with the fallout from that for a long time to come. I'm happy to take questions. Uh, so what advice are you giving about uh, possible deportation? Should Brenton Tarrant be Australia's problem? Uh, look, as I indicated to you yesterday, I have sought that advice. In fact, I sought that advice quite early on. I'm still uh, awaiting receipt of it. What I can say, though, is that uh, absolutely, uh, charges uh, and the trial itself will happen in New Zealand. As for the remainder, uh, I'm seeking advice. So is that a possibility that he could see out his sentence in Australia? Uh, I don't want to preempt anything there. He will certainly uh, face the justice system of New Zealand for the terrorist attack uh, that he has committed here. Uh, Can you under the Terrorism that you... Suppression Act being considered? Uh, that's not something that I can give advice on. Obviously, that's, uh, um, that's an operational issue. Uh, and at this time, I, I can't give anything further detailed in that regard. I have had an indication...
that there will be further charges laid, but the, as to the specifics of those, I cannot provide them. Your Can you office officer that you received his manifesto before the attack? Uh, I was um, one of uh, more than 30 recipients of a manifesto that was mailed out nine minutes before the attack took place. It did not include a location. It did not include specific details. I'm advised that within two minutes of its receipt, uh, in at least my office, it was conveyed directly to parliamentary security. But the assurance I want to give is that had it provided details that could have been acted on immediately, it would have been. But there unfortunately were no such details in that email. Did you personally receive it? chilling for you to to receive it in a broader sense, it, it was, it, I understand it was to a general email address. It, it was. It did not uh, go directly uh, to, to me. I did not directly receive it. Um, and as I say, it went to um, over 30 emails, including uh, meeting, uh, media, including uh, the parliamentary tourism desk. Uh, it went quite widely. Um, but again, the fact that there was uh, an ideological manifesto with extreme views attached uh, to this attack, of course, is deeply disturbing. Have you, Would you read consider it? a moratorium? Sorry, have you read it? Uh, elements, yes, I have. Would you consider a moratorium on um, firearms ahead of any potential changes to the law to get them off the streets to stop their sales and advertising? Yeah, we are having a. We will have a conversation at cabinet tomorrow. A discussion around. Uh, any uh, uh, potential potential reform. Obviously, I've already un indicated there will be uh, changes to our gun laws. Uh, there will be more detailed discussion with Cabinet tomorrow. I have heard and seen reports, um, but as yet unverified of uh, potential activity. Um, but as yet, I haven't received official advice as to whether or not there's been any change in, in purchases. That's, that's something I have asked for, for follow-up information on. Would you find that disturbing, that people, in the light of the events of the last couple of days, that people would be going out? I, I want to get to the bottom of whether or not that has indeed occurred. We're, we're hearing anecdotally, though, that, that, that gun shop owners are busier than usual. Is that concerning to you, off the back of what we saw in the past year? Uh, again, uh, we cannot be deterred. Uh, from the work that we need to do on our gun laws in New Zealand. They need to change, regardless of what activity may or may not have happened uh, with gun retailers, they will change. Do you think, will you, have the, will you have the cooperation of New Zealand First, which is being very loath to, um, on gun reform in the past? Uh, again, uh, I've, as I've already indicated, there will be changes to our gun laws. You, um, we will be discussing uh, some of the more detailed policy elements at Cabinet tomorrow. Of course, I have had conversations directly with the Deputy Prime Minister, as you would expect already. Um, but again, I'll leave until um, uh, we've had those policy discussions before I give you further detail. Are you going to discuss um, those other elements that you talked about? They also go about um, potential changes to border control, the watch list process in particular. Are you expecting to get an update on that as well? Uh, we will have an agency uh, update for all uh, Cabinet members tomorrow. I expect that we will have a wide-ranging discussion. There are a couple of specific items that I wish to discuss directly. Gun policy um, is one of them, but yes, uh, uh, the issue around watch lists uh, and how we can ensure we give assurances uh, to the public that our agencies have the tools they need. Uh, all of that will be on the table tomorrow. In, last year, that okay. in, in, in March last year, the government was um, scheduled to revise the national intelligence priorities. When you did that, did you include white nationalism, extremism in the priorities? Uh, extremism is, of course, uh, an issue that our agencies are focused on and aware of. And as I've said for uh, m many months now, because in particular of the global uh, surge that we have seen in those activities, um, that they have uh, been very active in that space. Um, but again, uh, as I say, we need to make sure that we are looking more broadly at the work of our agencies, not just our intelligence services, police uh, at our borders, to ensure uh, that uh, we've taken a comprehensive approach 
and do everything we can to prevent any kind of activity uh, or action like this in the future. Prime Minister, given we're still yes, at that high level of, um, of threat, yes. do we need, are you looking at our embassies more broadly, like overseas embassies, to, to up their security? status as well? Look, at that operational level, I really rely on the advice of our, uh, of our services and our agencies um, to provide advice really directly to us and, of course, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade as to what might, might be necessary. I haven't received anything specific to that, no. Well, the government the manifesto that your office received, was that the 74-page manifesto? I believe so. That has details of the attack sites in it. Uh, I would need to verify if that is indeed the case, but my understanding is what we received did not have those details. Is there anything that we could have done, the people that received if we could have, If we could have, absolutely, we would have. Uh, look, again, I reiterate, this was received by over 30 recipients nine minutes before guns were fired. Uh, within two minutes of its receipt, it went to our uh, uh, parliamentary security. Um, but again... Uh, the advice we have from police uh, is that actually by the time any of that emails and uh, details could have been passed on, they were already receiving those 1-1 calls and responding. And someone was then taken into custody within 36 minutes. Why didn't your office send it directly to police rather than parliamentary security? We have a very specific protocol around when we receive material like this, that it does go for immediate response to parliamentary security. That's always been the protocol in place when we receive threatening material. Why is that the case? Is that because you received just so many of them? Uh, oh, sorry. Um, that is the protocol that has been in place. I would need to ask from an operational level, both police and security, why that's the immediate response, but that is the protocol that's in place. Would the government give consideration to helping out logistically um, and or financially if any families want um, the bodies of victims repatriated to other countries? Would we find out? Sorry, was the oh, question? Would you give um, financial logistics support uh, if, if bodies My, my preliminary them? advice is that the $10,000 that is available could be used for those purposes. Um, again, it will be obviously up to the individual discretion of family members as to whether or not that's what they would be seeking. But my understanding is it could be used for that purpose. Is there any other have you had any indication of families wanting to send um, their loved ones back to other countries? Uh, no, I, I have not. But I understand. Look, there could be certainly circumstances where. Um, uh, that might be assumed. I haven't received any direct advice or suggestion of any direct request at this stage. MFAT is um, uh, working directly on the ground, uh, so will be available and are connecting people directly for consular assistance if, for instance, they are visitors. Well, you have the capacity um, for extra financial assistance in particular if that money was, if that set amount wasn't going to cover requests like that? Yeah, I certainly, if that was an issue, I would want to hear about that and see whether or not there were arrangements that could be directly made for, for that purpose. The Washington Post has reported that um, there's no comparable intelligence sharing um, arrangement for domestic terrorism as there is for international terrorism. Um, is that the case? Uh, are we not sharing information about domestic terrorists as, as much as we should and will we look to in the future? Uh, look, I mean, that's something that I actually would want to seek some direct advice on in terms of those distinctions. Uh, because, of course, when it comes to extremism and in inciting violence, demarcating that between domestic and international is, is I would have thought, in some cases difficult. Um, so I would, I would want to ask agencies before giving you a definitive answer there. But as I say, uh, as I've said before, in this case, obviously very close cooperation between New Zealand and Australia. Do, you, do, you have a, do we have a number of unaccounted for people that are not in hospital or have been confirmed deceased? Do we have an unconfirmed... A number of um, people are missing or unaccounted for? Uh, we have provided a provisional um, list directly to families that has not been uh, formally released for the fact that it is not a formal list. Uh, it, it is, however, something that the families were asking for. Until formal identification has taken place, that list won't be released. How, 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 many, how many people aren't on that list? How many people I, can't, I can't answer that because question, Tova. people coming to us saying... They can't find their family member yes. either on the deceased list nor nor the, the list of the injured. What's your message to those people? Because they're desperately concerned. Uh, and again, we have people working closely on the ground, particularly Red Cross, who are able to reconcile um, the information that they have, both about who's in hospital and on the missing list. Obviously, uh, our 
teams are working as quickly as they can on victim identification. Why is the formal identification process taking so long? Uh, there are obviously in these cases a number of uh, sensitivities around formal identification. Uh, as you can imagine, this was a particularly violent uh, act. Have Given his high status, um, would you be prepared to confirm the Christchurch imam um, was one of the people who has died? Is that something you I, I cannot confirm anyone until we have formal identification. Have you had any other indications from any other government representatives that they may want to visit New Zealand? Uh, any other government? Yes, I can confirm that we have uh, a delegation from Turkey. Uh, who will be um, uh, visiting uh, uh, New Zealand to bring their uh, expression directly of solidarity to the Muslim community here, and we welcome that. Um, at this stage, it's not clear um, uh, the number of Turkish nationals um, affected, but that is obviously a significant Muslim country who wish to express their solidarity with New Zealand, and we welcome that. So what about, what about Malaysia and Indonesia? Have they expressed any... Um, interest in sending representatives here? I haven't had direct advice on that. I Look, I wouldn't rule that out for commemorative services, for instance, but I haven't any had a formal indication at this stage. Do you, do you think that uh, Facebook, Twitter and Google should be regulated in any way to stop their platforms live streaming and being used to weaponise this sort of uh, message? Like yeah, well, certainly, as you know, we... Uh, uh, did as much as we could to remove uh, or seek to have removed some of the footage that was being circulated uh, in the aftermath of this terrorist attack. Uh, ultimately, though, uh, it has been uh, up to those platforms uh, to facilitate their removal and support their removal. Is that you know, enough, though? Oh, I do think that there are uh, further questions to be answered. You know, obviously these social media platforms have wide reach. This is a problem that goes well beyond New Zealand. It has played out in other parts of the world. So whilst we might have uh, seen action taken here, that hasn't prevented them being circulated beyond New Zealand shores. Uh, this is uh, an issue that goes well beyond New Zealand, but it doesn't mean we can't play an active role in seeing it resolved. This happened because Facebook has live streaming. This yes. was live streamed and then it was recorded and yes. then splintered and sent around. And distributed. Should Facebook stop live streaming? Well, certainly um, I've had contact um, <coughs> from uh, Cheryl Sandberg. I haven't spoken to her directly, but she has reached out uh, and an acknowledgement of what has occurred here in New Zealand. Uh, and this is an issue that I will look to be discussing um, directly with Facebook. What did she say? What did Cheryl Sandberg say? When she an acknowledgement, sharing obviously condolences as many have. Are you surprised? Uh, just acknowledging I have met Cheryl Sandberg in the past. Did she so discuss the, the live streaming? I haven't had a discussion, uh, a substantive discussion, no. It was, uh, again, a re we were in receipt of a message. Are you surprised that Mark Zuckerberg himself has not express condolences. Tim Cook has, and he did express condolences immediately after a live streaming of a murder in Cleveland two years ago. Again, it is not for me to sit and um, uh, make determinations of the way that others should be responding. It's my job to make sure that we have, uh, uh, in the long run, a policy response uh, that acknowledges exactly what has happened on our shores. At this stage of the, um, at this stage of the government's sort of thinking about this, are you considering any sort of formal review or inquiry into both the events leading up to the tragedy and also the lessons that can be learned out of it, such as Facebook? We have certainly already said uh, uh, in over the course of a number of days, I've acknowledged that there are questions that have been raised that we know that we need to give assurances to the public and answer. Uh, and I will be discussing that very issue with uh, uh, with Cabinet tomorrow. Could our intelligence agencies um, see more funding or bolstered powers after this attack and, and their failure, I suppose, um, to pick this guy up? I would it, it? look, no question that we need to have a comprehensive response to the range of issues and questions that this has raised for us. Um, I will be having these discussions with Cabinet tomorrow. Uh, I don't want to preempt that, but I will be looking to move 
as swiftly on those areas where we need to respond as, as I can. Is that something that you'd consider, though, in increasing the powers available to our intelligence agencies? Again, I need to make sure that whatever action we take, it actually would have been the kind of thing that could have made a difference in this case. Will, will the discussion... Will this, uh, yeah. On the gun law changes, has the Leader of the Opposition indicated whether he would assist in reaching a parliamentary consensus on... I've certainly um, uh, uh, acknowledged with him directly that uh, that we will be pursuing some work in this area. Obviously, I've stated that publicly, so he, he obviously was already aware of that. And I did state that we would be sharing our plans uh, directly with the opposition. Uh, but, of course, my first step is a conversation with Cabinet. Prime Minister, when you talked earlier about um, leniency for ACC for funeral costs, etc., for people who aren't um, citizens of New Zealand, would you expect to have some leniency for people who are, say, on work visas and, and don't want to stay in Christchurch? Would you be looking at things like that, making some exemptions in this case? Yeah. Um, look, at what, what is, will be clear to you is that obviously we're trying to build a picture uh, of those who have been directly affected here. At the moment, we do not have a formal, we have an informal but not a formal list uh, of those who may have fallen um, victim of this terrorist attack. But it is fair to say that I am interested in the overall ongoing well-being of the families affected. Um, so there is more work there to be done. Will the discussion in Cabinet tomorrow include looking at whether to ban semi-automatics and whether to um, create a gun register? Uh, again, I'll be uh, um, reserving my ability to have that conversation directly with Cabinet before I share any of that more widely. I've already said there will be gun law changes, and there will be. Uh, the nature of those changes, I'm looking to move on as quickly as we can, but I do need to talk them through with Cabinet, uh, and then we'll look to share them uh, publicly as soon as we're able. Why not declare a moratorium on, on imports now to stop a last-minute surge of these things? Again, I need to verify whether or not that has indeed been the case. Um, but, uh, again, we are still looking uh, to move as quickly as we can, regardless. Do you think called um, Jankariah Weijam, who was, who was in the mosque, he's neither on the deceased list, uh, nor the list of the injured and his friends have made a desperate plea at Hagley Park today. What's your message to them? I'm happy to, Tover, I'm happy to take that message away, that name away, uh, and see what I can do with our authorities and agencies to try and square what's happened there. Um, I, I would reiterate again, the list that was released yesterday is very much an informal list of the missing. It is not a formal verified list at this stage, so it will not necessarily be complete. Um, I know that, of course, this is the um, uncertainty continues to cause distress. We are doing what we can. Agencies on the ground are doing what they can to move as quickly as possible. That is why we've brought in members of the Australian victim identification teams to try and process uh, uh, what needs to be done as quickly as possible. What did you, you think know of the you comments? Think about the, the, uh, the 50th victim, Prime Minister, and also just in relation... The which victim, sorry, Tracy? The 50th victim yes. who was discovered today. Is there anything you can tell us about them? No. And also, just in relation to the gun laws, do you think you can act within days or even a couple of weeks as Australia did? Yeah, my understanding was announcements, uh, even if actually my understanding is the legislative process took some time, but announcements were, were made within several weeks. Um, and so obviously there's you know, policy work and regulatory changes still obviously take time. But I'm looking to provide a very clear steer and direction as soon as I can. Um, when it comes to the 50th victim, look, there's, there's nothing specific that I can uh, really say other than an acknowledgement that the scale of this terrorist attack uh, I think was magnified by the fact that that count, um, initial count was not a complete one. What do you think of the okay, comments? I'll take just two more questions if I can. What did you think of the comments from the Australian Senator Fraser Hannan about um, uh, we should be here to blame the victims in the, in, the, in, the, in the attack? They were a disgrace. Any other questions? Would New Zealand have to seek a special arrangement with Australia in order to deport the murder accused? Uh, look, there is some um, uh, legal complexities here. That's why I'm seeking some advice. Uh, uh, but again, what I can say is this person will face the New Zealand justice system. Is there, right? 